Hello everybody and welcome to another episode here on The Learning Droid. So today what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at our review of the Creative Versa Tool by Walnut Hollow. I'm going to be trying to do a bit more editing, a bit more sort of informal, informal? informational editing uh, during this. So hopefully there'll be little things popping up to give you a little bit of close-up views, a little bit more information about things. So let's start. The Creative Versa Tool by Walnut Hollow is a solid point variable temperature machine. Uh, I got given this one as a review copy, so full disclosure, this one was free to me um, to do a review. I should have done the review a while ago, but my life got a little bit um, crazy for a while. So this was a free review copy, so of course, uh, full disclosure, there may be biases involved, but I'll try and be as fair as possible. So what does a solid temperature variable, solid temperature? Solid bit variable temperature machine mean? Well, basically, as you know, with most pyrography machines, they come in two varieties. They either come solid point or wire point. Solid point, the temperature is generated by a coil of wire inside the machine. And then a solid point of metal is heated up. So we have a solid point, which is, in this case, a screw thread. So the screw thread, and these are made from either, I believe, brass or steel. And the machine itself has a coil inside here, which um, a current runs through and heats up. Variable temperature simply means just that. You can change the temperature on it. In this case, for the Walnut Hollow Verse tool, you have a, I'd say, 270 degrees, so 270 degrees of a circle, variable temperature dial, which is attached directly to the cable. It's very light. A lot of variable temperature machines use a box unit and then use plug-in pens. This one just has a simple dial attached to the machine, which, of course, gives it a lot more flexibility when it comes to moving it in the big picture, so you can move it from place to place. It all fits in this little box, which it comes with, which is very nice and neat. And it, you can actually, despite the fact that when you first take it out, you think, God, I'll never get that back in there. It does actually go back in the box. However, it does mean that this unit moves about a lot because it's very light. It's not fixed to the table or anything like that. So it does move about a lot. Um, the variable temperature on this varies quite widely. It actually, on the back of the um, box that it comes with, it has a little breakdown of the temperatures and what they're for. They are quite broad, and there's a couple of things missing from the breakdown that I'd like to see included, but let's go through it. So you've got, at the start of the machine, along here, which is the bright yellow, or the sort of white yellow cream, you've got the very light temperatures. That's useful for wax burning, paper burning, things like that. It recommends leather, soft plastics, synthetic fabrics, and wax. So that's quite a nice little, um, little band. It gives you great uh, wax sculpting, things like that. And for wax sculpting, you've got a couple of useful bits that it comes with, but we'll get to the bits in a minute. It then goes up to the dark yellow, and for that it recommends, what does it recommend? It recommends cork, iron-on embellishments, hard plastic, leather, and wood. So this is the start of your light woods. This is for things like um, very light abishi, um, and if you want to do uh, shading on pine and things like that. It's also for leather, so this is if you want to do your leather pyrography, which you've seen on the channel. I haven't actually done leather with this machine yet. The reason I don't tend to do leather with uh, solid point machines, and the reason I personally wouldn't recommend doing leather with this, is leather produces a lot of oil. Even the dry leathers produce a lot of oil when you burn them, and that does make it very hard to clean the bits. And of course, with a solid point machine, you have a very small supply of very set bits. Whereas with a wire point machine, with most of them, you can make your own bits. And with other ones, they tend to sell the little bits quite cheap. Some of them, they sell the bits quite expensive, but some of them, they sell the bits quite cheap. So I personally could keep my uh, leather pyrography to my wire point machine, where if a piece does get beyond the point where it can be cleaned, if a tip does get beyond the point where it can be cleaned, I can just throw it away. You can buy replacement bits for this, and they aren't ridiculously expensive, but they also aren't as cheap as 3p worth of wire to bend back into a new shape. You then move on to the orange, which is for cork, natural fibres, wood, and something else it recommends there. Stencil cutting, apparently. So you can stencil cut with that. And then dark red, of course, is for foam cutting, wood, uh, pumpkins, gourds, things like that. And something else? Soldering. Aha, the dark red is for soldering. Now, what it doesn't state on here is laser patterning. So laser patterning is where you print a pattern using a laser printer. You then heat up the pattern using a pyrography machine patterning bit, which this is supplied with. 
Yeah. And you then press onto a piece of wood and the pattern transfers across. Now you'd think you'd need to use quite a low temperature, but actually for that I'd recommend you're going to about the midline between dark yellow and orange. So you're actually going quite high temperature. We're talking light wood burning, heading towards actually being able to burn paper, but you don't want to scorch the paper when you're doing a pattern transfer. So it does have a great variable temperature. It's got a nice smooth action. So there's a huge amount of variation you can actually get in the temperature and it's all about experimenting. Now the disadvantage with that, or the disadvantage with this machine as a variable temperature machine, is it is a solid point machine. So what that means is, unlike a wire point where it has a very low thermal mass, it's just the wire that heats up, it's a very small amount of wire, it heats up and cools down very quickly, which in itself is a bit of a disadvantage at times. This thing, this whole point, everything from the shield down, the heat shield down, heats up because the coil is stored inside this piece of metal here, the heating coil is stored inside this piece of metal here, down near the end. This whole thing heats up, so it's got a very high thermal mass, which means that if you have it at a, set of a reasonably high temperature to do dark lines, something like that, and then you want to go down in temperature towards a shading temperature, and you want to shade, then you're going to have to wait. Now, you can blow on it to speed up the process. So you can use um, air, so you can use a fan, or you can just blow on it properly um, to speed up the process of it cooling down. But it does take time to cool down, and it does take time to heat up because of the just the amount of metal it's heating up and the fact that the heat has to transfer by conduction through to the tip of the uh, tip that you're using. So there is a time scale thing where if you turn it down while working, don't expect it to instantly change temperature. However, that's a small thing to pay. The other thing is, of course, because it's a screw thread solid point machine, is if you're changing bits, then you won't be able to change bits while it's hot unless you're using a pair of pliers. To do it now I often do use a pair of pliers to change bits on solid point machines but changing bits when it's hot can lead to the bit shearing off if you put in a bit when it's hot you should always take the bit out when it's hot to stop it from shearing off so that's one of the disadvantages the other thing I found with this machine personally is this cable is a bit too bit too short so that when I'm working on a project I'll often be dragging this across the project that I'm working on. Now, I've all instinctively started lifting this up off the table and supporting it myself, so it's not a massive deal. However, it is something to, is something to bear in mind. But all in all, the machine is actually one of the better solid point machines I've ever used. The heat doesn't bleed through to the handle very much, um, even after a long period of burning. I've burnt with this for about an hour and a half, um, with it set on quite high temperature because I was burning hard wood. Um, and it's not bled through to the handle. The rubber grip's quite comfortable. The cable length in total is enough, even though I'd prefer this be a little bit longer. So all in all, the actual pen is quite comfortable. The pen's very thick, but that's standard with solid point pens. And of course, with a solid point pen, this happens with all of them, you've got two inches between the work you're working on and the handle you're holding. Wire point machines don't have that disadvantage, but of course, there's other disadvantages to go with the wire point machine. So as solid point machines go, I think this is one of the better ones I've ever had and the better ones I've ever seen. So let's talk about the selection of bits and pieces you get with it. So first off, you get this beautiful case, which does fit the machine again, despite the fact it doesn't look like it when you first open it. I first opened it, took the machine out and thought, good God, I'm never getting that back in there. But it does have some interesting little bits and pieces that are quite clever. First off, the box has a little cut here. So that when you place the machine in, like so, the cable from the machine rolls over into the second area and it goes through this little cut, through this little ditch, so that you can actually store the cable wound up in this side, which is very useful and quite a clever little addition. It's also got a centimetres and inches ruler on the lid. Uh, they're not hugely useful, but I have used them a couple of times to measure out things just before cutting, um, if I've lost my other ruler. And of course it comes with a set of dividers if you want to turn this into a, a storage box and a little tray for your pieces. It comes with a very nice folded wood support, no folded wood, folded metal support. It sets itself quite well. It's better than the stamped out ones um, because the stamped out ones you have to bend every time. This one has little wire loops at the bottom and the little wire loops just grip it in whatever position you put. It's got enough tension in the little wire clips to hold it in whatever position you put it. And it's quite convenient to just rest your pyrography machine on. 
It also comes with a little coil of lead-free solder. I have no idea how good quality this lead-free solder is because I don't solder things. So it may be god-awful lead-free solder, it may be great lead-free solder, I wouldn't know. Other than that, let's go through the points. So first point it comes with is the point that's screwed into it, which is the universal bit. This is a standard bit that comes with most solid point pyrography machines. It's a slant cut um, wedge point. So it's got a 45 degree slant or 30 degree slant and then it's cut to a wedge so that it's a triangular point. It's really good. Um, it's great for drawing lines. It's great for doing shading. It's as, it's as it says, it's a universal point. You can do all sorts of things with it. I use this quite a lot for a lot of my projects. Um, and if you want to, um, I list in most of my videos which points I've used for the project, so you can go and have a look. Um, I may also be, if I can figure out the uh, editing for it, put a little slice image down here, which shows you the different things you can do with that point. The next point we'll have a look at is the calligraphy point, if I can get it out. I shall use the other point to extract it. <laughs> the calligraphy point is very similar to the universal point, except it's flat wedge point rather than an angled wedge point. Uh, they recommend it for writing because it's called the calligraphy point because if you hold it and flow with it properly then it will give you a calligraphy style writing. I've never managed to do that myself. However, I do like it for very fine lines and for shading because the lack of the wedge means that you can hold the machine dead vertical and you can be very careful with lines and if you hold the machine 45 degrees at the angle so that the you're using the wedge point, the wedge part of it, then you can actually get some very nice shading with it. Again, if I can figure out the editing, I'll put a little thing down here showing a couple of different strokes you can do with that piece. The next piece we've got is the tapered point, and again, come out, come out, aha, freedom. The tapered point is just that, it's a fine tapered point. Um, it comes to a little a little bit of carbon build up on that. It comes to a fine point, it's very good for dotting, it's quite good for fine lining, strafing. I've also used it for doing hair and um, animal fur and things like that. So it's a very useful point and it's, um, well, it's a very useful point, what more can I say? The next point we'll talk about is the flow point. Now this one, so far all these points come with most, most variable temperature machines that come with a selection of points will come with these three. This one is a flow point. Now this one is one of the ones that not many machines come with. It's essentially a little dome, um, about, I'd say probably, well, let's measure it. Probably about four millimeters across. It's a little dome, probably about four millimeters by two deep, or one and a half deep. And this little dome is brilliant for flat shading. It's great for bigger dotting as well, for dotting for larger dots. It's great for shading and it's also good for going over lines that have become a bit ragged, so it's actually a good neatening tool. I like it a lot. Um, it's one of the few points that I have very rarely seen before and it's a great thing that they've included that. The spear point, or shading point as they call it, I call it a spear point, they call it a shading point. It looks like a little leaf um, and it's designed for shading. However, personally, having worked with quite a few of these in the past because these come with most solid point machines. I don't like them for shading because just the way I hold the pen, the angles I hold it at, the flat panel on the bottom which is what you're supposed to use to shade um, doesn't come cleanly in contact with the surface so my shading tends to be a little bit um, uneven and, and ragged when I use a point like this. However loads of people do use points like this for shading and use them very successfully. Um, I do try every now and then to shade with these, but I just don't like them. I prefer to shade with things like the flow point or the calli calligraphy point or the universal point. I find shading with those easier compared with shading with the shading point. However, the little ball pit point, the little ball tip on the end of the spear, end of the, sh end of the leaf shape, um, I do actually like for dotting, for line work um, and for edging. And I have used things like this for, for doing the edge of a piece for, for blacking an edge. I haven't used this one for that yet, so it's nice and clean. But some people do love these for shading. Some people find these to be the best thing for shading, and it's nice that they've included that. We, of course, have our patterning point. 
Now, some people I have seen use this to do big black circles or to blacken the edge of something. Personally, I find that that ruins the surface for when you're actually doing pattern transfer. Um, this is a big broad point. It heats up slowly and it stays at quite a cool temperature unless you pump a lot of heat into it. And so it's great for patterning and that's exactly what it's for. You lay a piece of paper down and then you just pattern across it with the tip. So that's very useful. It then comes with two bits in steel. So it's got a lead free solder a bit. The lead free solder a bit is very similar to the taper point except it comes down to a slightly less fine point. Um, I'd say the point tapers in half the distance and comes down to about half the width. And it's got a nice long body. Now, I don't use this for soldering, I actually use it for pyrography because I actually like the, like the tip on it for pyrography, and you can use these points for pyrography. It also comes with a blade point. Now, unlike some groups which provide you with a chuck, which you can put blades in and out of, this comes with a solid fixed blade, so you can't actually pull the blade in and out of this. But it's nice, it's used for foam cutting for, for wax work, for um, patterning, pattern cutting, things like that. And it comes in a little plastic pouch so that it's not dangerous. The final three points we'll talk about are the three, in my personal opinion, least interesting ones. Again, they're common ones that come with most solid point machines, and they're nice to be included. Some people do love them. Personally, they're not my style. And these are three hot stamping bits. And basically they've got little patterns on them. This one has a square in the centre and three, uh, four half squares around the outside. So that if you repeat it very accurately, you can have this whole pattern of squares. Uh, this one has a three step circle. So you've got an outer circle, an inner circle, and then a dot in the centre. And then this one is similar to the square one, except it's hexagon. So it's got one hexagon in the centre and then six triangles around the outside. And again, if you use it very accurately, you can create a repeating hexagon pattern. Uh, you can do some weird things with them. For instance, you can use the edge of the square one to create crenellations um, or the edges of bricks and um, scales and things. But I'm not a big fan of the stamping bits because they're very isolated. They're very, this is what, this is the pattern it creates. This is the shape it creates. If anyone's got some great ideas for how to use these in an interesting and weird way, feel free to send me the information, send me a link to a video of it. I'd be more than interested to see. Now, because I'm in England, I will say that this is an American machine by an American company called Walnut Hollow, which means that it comes with an American plug and it runs off 110 volt. Now, I've said this to a couple of people before on my channel who've asked about this. If you are not in a country that uses 110 volt, then do not just buy an adapter which changes the shape of the plug. They're like travel style adapters. They're little thin adapters that are about that broad and they simply change the shape of the plug. They don't do anything to the current. If you use an adapter like that on a machine like this, you'll burn the machine out very quickly and it will damage the machine because you're running too much current through it. You need a transformer. They look like this. They're big blocks of metal or big blocks of uh, black plastic, but they've got big blocks of metal on the inside and they'll be rated on the front. And what you want is you want one that will convert your voltage to the voltage that's needed. And you also want one that can take the wattage. Because a lot of people make mistakes with these. Um, I've seen people buy 45 watt versions of these and plug 2000 watt kettles into them. And the 2000 watt kettle has destroyed this. Uh, this machine is, if memory serves, a 40, uh, 35 watt. Yeah, this machine is a 35 watt machine. It actually says it on the handle, which makes it very convenient. 25 watt. It says 25 watt, 120 volt, AC, 60 hertz. So it actually gives you that information on the handle. So if you're looking for a transformer, you can buy it, but I'll give it again. It's a 25 watt, 120 volt, 60 hertz machine. Now that seems very complicated, very difficult to sort of absorb, but these things are rated and they have their rating very clearly displayed when you purchase them. So what you need is you need one that copes with at least 25 watts. This one is actually a 45 watt one. There's nothing wrong with having one that copes with more wattage at all. This one is a 45 watt one, which means that it will not have any problems dealing with my 25 watt machine. And it converts the 240 volt to 120 volt, which is what you need. So if you're going to be in a country that doesn't use the same um, wattage, the same voltage as 
the machine you're purchasing, then you really do have to buy a transformer, also known as a current converter, rather than an adapter. Because an adapter just changes the shape of the plug and it will cause damage to the machine. Now, as said, once you're finished with this, it should, and now this is the point where I fail miserably at getting it back into its case, fit back into the case. Now, I've done this several times, and of course, now that it's on video, it's going to fail miserably, because that's how videos work. But this goes down in there. Oh, don't you do this to me. Don't you do this to me. Stay. That tucks in there. Okay. That tucks in there. That goes on top. And the whole lock closes and clips shut. So it's actually a really convenient box. Everything does go into it really nicely. Uh, as I said, it's a solid point variable temperature machine. I love it for the price. Price-wise, it's actually very cheap for what it is. Uh, most variable temperature machines, you're probably looking, variable temperature solid point machines, you're probably looking at paying about 70 quid for. This one is about $70, which makes it about 40 quid. And considering what it comes with and the pieces it comes with, especially the storage box, the storage box is a nice little addition, um, which most machines won't come with. Most machines come with uh, um, uh, some kind of case, but it will be very, it's not a very well thought out case in the case of, in, not a very well thought out case in the case of most machines. Um, <laughs> it will struggle to fit everything into it. So with something like this, I personally feel that uh, the, the case it comes with, the, the whole presentation of it is very well presented. The machine itself is well made. I've used it on about eight or nine projects now. Quite a few of them have ended up on my YouTube channel. So you can go back and have a look at those projects. It will clearly say in the description if I'm using this. Um, if it doesn't say in the description, just send me a message and flag it up but in most cases it'll be quite obvious if I'm using this machine um, it's well presented it's nicely packaged it's got some nice information on it the temperature var temperature variable switch is very smooth and clean which I like um, the whole thing packs away neatly the bits that it comes with are good quality and a good selection of them and all in all it's a very nice machine the one gripe I have with it and I will have, I've said it a lot, but I'll reiterate it again. The distance between the hand piece and the variable temperature switch is just too short for me. Um, I do love it, and I will continue to use it. It just means that I tend to prop the variable temperature switch on my other hand, so I'll have it across the back of my hand to keep it from scratching across the top of my piece. It's actually a very smooth case, so it won't damage bits of pyrography, it won't damage bits of wood and things that it goes across the top of. I just don't like the, the feel and the temperature of it touching the, the feel and temperature, feel and sound of it touching against the piece that I'm working on at the time. So all in all, I would definitely say it's worth picking up. If you're not in America, then grab a converter with it as well. Converters run usually about £10 in the UK. I'd say that's probably, you don't need a converter in the US, but US dollars is a, is a worldwide recognised currency, so well. I'm sure pounds are as well, but US dollars are a standard currency for um, cross countries trade. So in US dollars, I suggest you're probably going to pick up one of these up for about $15. So that's the Walnut Hollow Creative Verse tool. They do do several other smaller tools, which are non-variable temperature solid point machines and tools designed for soldering and things like that. I haven't seen any of those, but if they're made with the same quality as this one, then they're definitely worth looking at. Thank you for watching and I will see you again next time.